Hi, my name is Rebecca Thompson Hitt. I'm the founder and executive director of the Consciously Parenting Project, and this is the Consciously Parenting Podcast. We're going to be talking with parenting visionaries, professionals, and parents to guide you and inspire you to be the most connected parent you can be. Hi, Rebecca Thompson Hitt here, and I am here with Christy Farr, the unruly woman. And, you know, we have known each other for a really long time. And every once in a while, we have the opportunity to get together and talk about things. And this seemed like the absolute best time to do that. So, Christy, could you introduce yourself real quick in case they don't know who you are, Unruly Woman? (laughs) Yes, I'm Christy. Um, And I am, gosh, we have been actually working together off and on since longer than I've been the unruly woman. So that's saying a lot. That is saying a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. So I work uh, primarily with women, although not exclusively. And I spend the bulk of my time talking about things that are not working and figuring out with my clients how to make them work. And um, that uh, a lot of times involves space stuff, space healing, and also relationships, life work, um, there's a lot of emphasis on what's going on in our country right now. So a lot of people are trying to find space in their lives for advocacy and to be a part of what they see as being deeply broken. And so the work keeps changing as the times keep changing. Yeah. And I know that you and I have worked together. We did a radio show um, just in case you missed it. It's, you know, true North parents, radio we did it a couple years ago and and Christy was my first and only guest I invited Christy to come (laughs) on my very first episode and then she didn't leave which was great it was working for us and so we ended up doing the entire year just the two of us which was which was fabulous and um and last year I uh decided to get rid of most of my things and so we did a series called 27 days where where we Christy helped me get rid of most of my stuff and so as I would get stuck in different areas or different things or what do I do with this we did a whole series we did these videos and so any excuse for us to get together I mean exactly absolutely so I have had a lot of people who have had issues with boundaries uh, in my practice, it it keeps coming up and coming up and coming up. And so I was trying to figure out what to talk about for my podcast. And then I thought, you know, we should talk about boundaries. I'm, I'm trying to go through my book and talk about the different aspects of my book. And I have one about boundaries. I have a, a guiding principle about boundaries and it's later though. So I was going to do it later. And then I thought, no, the time is now. And then I thought, and then I thought, who can I talk to about boundaries? Yes. Who yeah. who is good at boundaries? And then I, uh, okay, I think we get to play. <laughs> so I love that if you're going to release most of your worldly goods and travel around the world, you call me. And if you need to talk about people being told no, then you call me. So I, <laughs> I like the person I've become in this, in this Rebecca Christie. Um, duo. This is good. I I feel as though you understand, excuse me, understand what I have to offer the world. So yeah. 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 And, and so that's exactly why we're here. And I know you just did um, workshops, a yes workshop and a no workshop. So this is very much in your world right now. Well, you know, I, it doesn't really matter what I'm working with someone about. We have the same things that happen over and over again something isn't comfortable. It's not working. They want to cultivate something and they can't get it done. They want to change something. They can't make it happen. Or they're in relationships with work or personally that just don't work. And it always comes back to these same ideas of figuring out what is true for me, figuring out how to move into alignment with that. And I think that our days are all just a series of yes and no answers. And that a lot of times the women in my life that are like really struggling, it's because they're saying yes to things that it, their truth is a no, or they're saying no to things that internally they know they need to say yes to. I don't feel like they have the space to say yes to the things that matter. And they don't feel like they have the right to say no to the things that I that, that no longer feel true for them. And I, I really do, you know, eight and a half years in, I thought that's really what this is all about. That's the solution to all of these problems. So. 
right? Yeah. And, yeah. and what I see even a step before that is that some of my people have never, nobody ever asked them if something felt good or if it didn't feel good, they, and they don't know. Yes. And, and so that's the first step in all of this is even identifying, because sometimes we shove that stuff down so far that we don't even recognize we're snapping at people and we can't quite figure out even why we're snapping at people. You right. know, what, what is going on with me? Why am I so irritable? But in reality, it's one of those situations like you just described. It's, you know, you've said yes to something that you really don't, don't feel in alignment with. Mm -hmm. And you don't recognize that you've even done it because that may have been what you grew up with, what you observed your mother doing or your parents doing and, you know, just going along and doing whatever you're supposed to do. And so I find that my, my families, my people first need to identify, you know, am, am I shoving something down? Right. Have, I, have, I, have I totally disconnected from how I truly feel about this? And so can we talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. I, I, I feel that in my work as well. And there are sometimes women who come to me and I, you know, I'll say things like, well, what do you want to do? And they're like, what? Right, right. You know, huh? and it, so it's often not even that we're in a situation where we can't figure out how to do what we want to do. I think a lot of women are really feeling like they, they don't even know how to how to recognize what's true or what isn't. Um, and so we start to look at, in, in workshops and stuff, we start to look at what does yes feel like in your body? And so the way that I most effectively can help someone figure out what a yes feels like, what a no feels like, is like we talk about something going on this week. What's something that you really enjoyed doing? Oh, good. When you were taking the kids to the water park, that was really exciting. You felt really uh eager to get up and start the day. You had fun planning it. You got your friends to meet you there. Great. That feels like, yes. Okay. Where do you feel that in your body? Oh, okay. So we'll start to see that she gets a, there's a little something in her heart that's sort of in that area that feels like excitement. Or we find that, oh, like, oh, like my shoulders are down when I think about that. Right. No, often feels like this. Yeah. And so just figuring out where we keep those answers in our body so that we can start to reconnect with the physical response. Um, because almost always once we reconnect with that and then I say, okay, is this true for you or not? Is this feel like yes or no? Then all of a sudden it's clear like, Oh, my body is saying no, but we're talking about, you know, 30 and 40 and 50 year old women who have lived decades without recognizing that that turning in their stomach is no. You know, that's their body's way of saying, we already have an answer about this. <laughs> right. And we have to find a way to connect that with the mental recognition. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And that's such a huge step for, for so many people, I find. I mean, myself, I mean, I remember going through this 10, 15 years ago. Um, and, you know, in the uh, 10 years before that, that I was in therapy and, you know, like all of this time that I've spent trying to just connect with my body. And then once I've connected with my body, figuring out, well, now what do I do? Right. <laughs> you know? So I love what you just said about, you know, helping people to just connect with that experience this week. So I would invite you, if you're listening, to just take a moment and just connect with something that happened this last week that was a yes for you. Absolutely. And then if you find, I think, you know, figuring it out is a huge piece of the puzzle. And what I have found is that there's a, sometimes a little fear about figuring it out because oh gosh, what yeah. does it mean? Right. So if I am, am checking in about something, um, I'll just go right for the, you know, uh, right for the throat of this thing. But let's say we're talking about your relationship, your marriage, and you're having a conversation with your partner and the idea of um, staying married to this person. I have big, deep conversations with my clients, as you know. So like somebody will hear like that that's a no. Well, they don't want to feel that. They don't want to know that. They don't want to face that. So I'm like, just let's just separate recognizing what a yes and no feel like from what it means when we figure out what yes and no feel like. Right. Because if you can't separate those two, 
um, we may be living in a in such a misaligned way that it's a, it's scary to figure out that I'm hearing no about this job or I'm hearing no about um, moving to a place that I know I'm supposed to move, you know, supposed to move. A lot of the resistance comes from not knowing what you'll do with what you find out. You know, people are afraid because we're living, some of us are living very misaligned lives, you know, misaligned what we're living from what we're, what's true for us. And so there's sometimes that's the bulk of the resistance is I don't want to know that this thing I'm already doing is a no. I don't want to see that what's a yes for me is this thing that seems so far away and impossible that I don't know how to make it happen. So if you're feeling afraid of doing this work, then separating those two things is a great um, is a great invitation to just, okay, I want to know what yes and no feel like I'm going to separate. It's a separate problem. It's a separate step to, to start to move into alignment with the yes and the no. Right. And I think that that's really, really important to separate it out because you're right. I mean, I, you know, if, if, if I'm checking in with what a no feels like in my body, for example, and it's, is something that's big. And now I'm feeling not only whatever the no feels like, but now I'm feeling waves of anxiety. (laughs) Now I feel like I'm going to throw up, you know? (laughs) And and this is like not working and I'm going to run away. Yes. I'm going to say, never, (laughs) never mind. I'm just going to go back to my little bubble. Yes. And be done. Yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah. It's it's in it. It feels in, like vital for our to have any chance at our you know really enjoying our future. Whether this is just the yes and no for us, and then also when we're talking about relationships with other people, but it 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 sometimes can take some time, and it also may require skills that you don't have, which means getting support, taking workshops, working with somebody like Rebecca if it's a family or parenting issue, working with me if it's something else, so that you can or you know someone in your own world, but to to kind of figure out how to change what is out of alignment, but it's a whole different situation to move into alignment with things. And it's not, it doesn't have to be a thing that feels automatic. It doesn't, you don't have to do that right away. Don't be afraid to find yes and no, just because some big things might need to change. Right. Right. And, and I think that that's super, super important. So I, I loved when you were describing the yes, that, you know, that, you know, okay, I took the kids to the water park and that felt good. I love that that was just a simple, like there's, there aren't any layers in there. (laughs) Um, Right. You know, it's okay. That felt good for me. We went to the beach and we had a lovely time and that, okay, where do I feel that in my body? And then if you can find a no that's recent, that felt good. You know, so something yeah. small. I, I decided not to have peanut butter for breakfast. Yeah. I'm good with that. All right. How did that know? I didn't, I didn't want peanut butter. Right. How did that feel in my body? Right. So choosing something that's not emotionally charged. Don't start with your marriage if you right. know that that's, <laughs> that's, not, <laughs> that's not feeling good. Um, don't right. start with, you know, like... The, the, the big, big, big thing. Start with something small. Start with your body. You know, do I want water? What does it feel like in my body when I want water? What does it feel like when I don't want water? Like that's innocuous. That's like just that first step. Right. And it's not attached. I mean, so, cause you know what to do if you need water. Right. Okay. I will drink it then. Yes, I will drink water or I don't want water. I will not drink water. That's easy, but it's, but it's a precursor and it's recognizing all the ways you already know a yes and all the ways you already know a no. That even if you're not really conscious of it, you can bring that into awareness. You have that level of awareness, even if you haven't been working on this for 20, 30 years. You know, you, you, you do, you may not have that conscious piece. So just bring that into awareness, bring what you're already doing into awareness. 
Well, and if you think about what the, the sort of bigger implication is here, that we're talking about like an internal guidance system, right? So if I am not sure what to do with myself, if I'm feeling dissatisfied, if I'm feeling unfulfilled, if I'm questioning if this is the right use for, you know, these precious hours and days of my life, and I don't know, um, for example, life purpose is a thing I talk about a lot with people and they're, you know, come to me and feeling really struggling with life purpose. And, 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 and they're trying to figure out in their brains, what is a suitable life purpose for them. And I'm like, well, it doesn't really work like that. You know, this is not a thing you decide or a thing that you look around in your brain and you find this is about, oh, I feel drawn in this direction. Oh, I feel drawn in that direction. Oh, I have these skills to offer this direction that feels true for me. And this is more about recognizing what's already going on for us than it is about recognizing some unknown thing out in the world. I'm figuring out who I am, not who I need to go be, like who I am, who I already am. So coming back to yes and no is actually how we figure those things out. Does it feel more true for me? You know, do I feel really passionate and, and upset? And do I get really worked up over this cause or that cause? Oh, this one, this is the thing I need to pursue. And how can I help? Oh, well, what am I good at? What feels good when I do it? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm a really strong people connector. Then I'm going to go figure out how I can help this cause with my people connector skills. It's, it's, this yes and no thing and being able to recognize them for ourselves feels like it's the building block for all of those decisions. And it is quite untrue for us to make them just with our heads. Our body is trying to tell us we can just follow that guidance when right. we can, you know, have the courage to recognize it. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, and it does take courage to recognize it, especially if we have outside messages, which all of us have, you know, from the time that we're little, no, no, you're supposed to do it this way. And, you know, right. when you grow up, you're supposed to be a doctor, or you're supposed to do this or, and we, and we start drowning. It's, it drowns out our own voices. Absolutely. And so as, but I love how you're saying it's one step at a time. It's okay. Let me check in about this. Let me take this piece. What, what lights me up? when I think about, like you're talking about life purpose, when I think about, when I think about writing for me, mm -hmm. I, you know, Oh, uh, I love starting my day writing. Right. And, you know, and I love talking to parents. These are things that just, okay, I get to, that's, that's uh, my friend Janet always says that, you know, if you start saying I get to, <laughs> that's a clue. <laughs> that's a yes. I get to talk to families. I get to write. I get to live in Mexico right now. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's that yes. It's that yes and that, that feeling within us. It's our internal guidance. And that's what we're connecting to. Absolutely. I think my first run-in with this, there was one or two early in my life in my teenage years, but the first really big one was when I met a woman who was planning a home birth and I was about to have a Seth and she was talking to me, introduced me to this whole world of, you know, unmedicated childbirth and she was doing it at home. I was doing it at the hospital, but I got a midwife instead of a doctor, you know, sort of And it, it, what would happen is she would say something to me and I would think, oh, yes. And then there would be like parenting moments where people are saying, well, you need to let him cry. And I would be like, like, I, nope, nope. That was a big, strong, nope, no for me. No way. Is that true? Um, when my kid needs me, uh, it, it, it felt an absolutely like a yes for me. And I could see from his physical body that it was a yes for him, for me to respond to him quickly and with love. Like there, I could pick up books off of the bookcase at the you know library or whatever, open them up and read the guidance inside the books and feel whether it was a yes or a no. Mm -hmm. So it's not just you know life purpose and where I want to you know what I'm going to put on when I go to my closet in the morning. I can tell 
what people are in alignment for me. I can tell what foods are in alignment for me. I can tell what work is in alignment for me. I can tell what parenting is in alignment for me because I, it just feels good or it doesn't. And becoming obsessed with that means I, it's like getting a compass in a car. You know, I can, I can go all the way to where I need to go with this tool. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to uh, pause our conversation for today and we're going to come back next week and we're going to be talking about um, applying this in our families. I've got a lot of families right now who are looking at applying this with extended family members. And so we're going to go there next. And then in our last podcast episode with Christy. We're going to be looking at parenting, everyday parenting, and how we, how we can apply boundaries with our kids with love and respect. So thank you so much, Christy, and we'll talk to you next week. All right. I'm looking forward to it. You've been listening to the Consciously Parenting Podcast with Rebecca Thompson-Hitt. For more information, visit our website, consciouslyparenting.com.